prepare yourself. So, you know, that there's always this kind of image uh, that's, that is forced into being portrayed, no matter what, you know, and, and how they say, well, okay, well, it has to be this, and then you have a, board, a bunch of board members. Now, you'll remember in the music industry how A&R directors were kind of removed from the picture in the 90s, so that way... Promotions took more of the role of like picking what bands would be signed versus having an A&R person who was actually on the ground, knew the scene, and could see things that developed, and that there was music development. You know, when I got my first, when we got our first, when I was in Public Disturbance, and we got our uh, record contract, it's like, you know, it was about the you're going to develop this artist, not like, okay, we're just going to do a, a distro deal and we're just going to take your stuff and give me something prepackaged and we're not going to do anything but just, you know, put it out there. And if it doesn't really work, then we'll go shelf you and then we'll just own your music and we won't even let you release it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so as, so you're, and it's interesting because uh, Vernon Reed, I had interviewed Vernon Reed from Living Color, and he talked about that same aspect of how the 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 things the thing that was scary about where we were going was not like we as a culture where we were going was not that the government the super government was going to impose things, but his uh, hypothesis was that it the 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 uh, system would make it so sexy that everybody had to opt in. That uh -huh. you would want to opt in to this kind of craziness that we see. Or not craziness, but in other words, it's things that are uh, uh, detrimental to the growth of movement. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's like that, that I, I kind of agree with that in that way that you know, you could say, I mean, that's you know, this thing, like, okay, take this blonde girl, you know, whatever, put her there, and then this is the recipe for success or whatever. You know, and I think <laughs> while this might make sense in some cases, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's very stagnant, you know, it just doesn't, it, you know, and I think now that it's just missed opportunities, that's how I see it, because there are so many more people and I think if you look at the, the way the music industry is shrinking, I think it's, it's, it's also because people think like that. You know, they, they only go for this amount of people uh, that, that is getting less and less instead of going, actually, we don't even know what all these other people might like. You know, I think um, also what we, uh, when we say, when we speak about the 60s or 70s or stuff like, the, like eras like this, I think it was a lot about experimenting who you could actually sell the music to. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, there was maybe in the beginning it was, uh, I mean, let's say with punk rock, I mean, it's maybe a good example. It's like, Okay, it's just uh, you, nobody would like this music, and then it's, you know, twenty years later, you would have you know very big bands having exactly the same sound, and that to me is what I'm talking about. You know, like imagine, uh, uh, it's, it's, let's put it like this: something like punk rock. I think in this environment now would have a lot of difficulties to actually even you know make that that evolution. Um, and then at the end of the day, we would just all miss out on something that a lot of people could like, you know, like even even if it's in the form of like Green Day or those types of bands, you know, but uh, it, it is something that uh, people who are only about uh, uh, making money and the business or whatever also have to realize, you know, they can't just take these formulas apply them and hope always it will work you know it's, it's just not like that it's not like selling food or stuff like that you know it, <laughs> it, it's it, you you ha i think you have to be in contact like you described it as an a and r with 
the scene, like with the with what's going on, because new things happen all the time, you know. So, but it's stupid that they are being ignored, <laughs> you know. And I think it's it's just yeah, you want to keep applying that. <clears throat> Try to sell Madonna tickets, <laughs> you know. Like it, it's it's almost. I mean, to me, the last few months were almost like a proof of how in bad shape everything is. You know, I mean, it was like. This whole um, uh, uh, hologram thing at Coachella with, with, with Tupac, and, and then uh, more people now talking about doing these hologram shows uh, and stuff, and then uh, you know the Madonna thing. Then you know, like I think all these, it's like almost like guys, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> you know, why don't you just focus? I mean, you have to put something in too at some point. You have to, you have to push new things and that doesn't mean just exploiting like young artists who, who just want to get something off the ground and just are willing to accept any deal you offer them so then just uh, you know be, be uh, uh, dropped like half a year later because that's really what a lot of these people do now right I mean you have they you just take everything for nothing uh, or for free basically and you just try it and if it doesn't work they haven't actually lost a lot you know and I think mm -hmm. this is kind of like a dishonest and, and weird relationship and it's corrupted you know it's really a, a corrupted uh, system at this point and that's why it's it's just failing more and more I mean even though if if people are trying to show all these positive numbers all the time and then it's like Truth is coming out like sometimes months later. It's like, ah, okay, that chart position was tricked because of like this or that, or you know, this came out, this was all like bullshit, or this was part of that campaign which actually maybe generated a lot of interest for that time, but it wasn't real fans, or you know, or you know, it's like all these things. And I'm, I'm always very skeptical about this because it's kind of like Wall Street thinking that is applied, you know, it's not about. Let's have a solid fan base. Let's have really like if if you would have would have like a, a store, you know, in the local community. You want the customers to, you know, to you want you know that, that I don't mean that in this ultra capitalist way. It's like you don't want to rip off basically the people who who buy your things. You know, I mean, if you rip them off all the time, they <laughs> they just get frustrated and they just leave. You know, I think mm -hmm. this is. What we're seeing a lot, and this is also, I think, a reason why people would turn to, you know, piracy in a way, uh, because why otherwise would you do that? You know, because we see the opposite too. I mean, especially with the Titan Riot, where I mean, I had people uh, send us uh, messages saying, "Look, I want to send you guys money," and I was like, uh, "What for? Like, why?" Do you want? It's like, yeah, because man, I got to you put the stuff up for free, and I kind of feel better. I was like, "Look, man, if." You would now send us money. It's like almost like I mean, the, the stuff was meant to be at almost like a present. You know, it's like if, if, if it's fine, man. Thank you. Like you know, but I appreciate that. But it's you know what I mean. But it's that mm -hmm. is that. I think it's very powerful. Like when when people when you get these kind of messages from people, it's like wow. Like. They love it so much. Like even with something for free, they they you know want to give something back. And you know we feel like this as musicians too. You know, like I mean, I described it in, in Brazil. It was funny because I spoke about this at the the show in Sao Paulo. Uh, we, we it was really emotional. Uh, the, the whole vibe there. You know, everybody was like going crazy, and it was really it was more than just uh, I think. Uh, a normal rock show or whatever mm -hmm. and um, at the end it, it was uh, you know I remember the scene because we played Revolution Action and you know people that song you know that, that means a lot to a lot of people and at the end and it was funny like at the end I spoke to the audience about how because I remembered you know like bef the last show be before we uh, wrote that song that we played live was actually uh, end of the 90s in Sao Paulo and it was quite quite strange. I was like, back in the day, it was like, you know, also very euphoric show, but not as much as this one. But it was crazy. You know, people were going crazy, and there was maybe more a shock uh, element back in the day because it was the first time we played there. Um, but it, you know, I was saying, look, it, it, I remember when we 
got back to Berlin uh, and we were writing new music, we were really like, okay, this is, man, this, you remember this energy, let's, you know, and it kind of inspired us also to write the song. And, and I uh, explained that to people and people were really like moved in a way, but to me that's a, an example of how things work, you just want to, of course, when you get this feedback as a musician, you want to, you know, give better music back to people, you know, and I think what I hate is when um, I witness when musicians are sort of cynical, you know, and they, they go, uh, whatever, you know, people just take our music for free or whatever, they just kind of steal it from us, so we, we exploit them back, and you know, it's like this corrupted <laughs> relationship that I find really sad, you know, mm. when, and I see it with DJs too, I mean, you mentioned DJs, I see so many cynical DJs who go like, yeah, well, I'll play this song, yeah, people dance, they're stupid. I'm like, look, but like, what's your mission? Like, why are you even DJing? You know, like, right. I mean, this is, if you just do that, that's like, I, I mean, to me, that's not even the definition of a DJ. You know, that's like 1950s, like 60s, the types of people who put on records <laughs> right. for people to dance to. That's not, you know, to me, DJ means you create something artistically and creative with the records and you push the boundaries. I mean, otherwise, why do... Even if you say, like, a radio DJ, the definition, like, of a real radio DJ, they would have done that. Maybe they wouldn't have created mixes in the beginning, but they would have played certain stuff before anybody else did. And, and so that's the definition of DJing and not just going, okay, what's the top 20 uh, press play? You know? <laughs> right. And then you can be cynical about it. You know, that's, I'm like, hey, do you love, if, if you would love this music, good. You know, I would go do it, you know, but if it's, if it's just about being cynical and, and paying your rent, then there's clearly something missing. Uh, right. Well, it's interesting. You also, interesting that you mentioned about the industry uh, in the mid 90s, uh, the RAV4 commercial used Everybody's Happy Nowadays from the Buzzcocks. And I just started kind of laughing I when it got to an extreme where uh, I think it was Carnival Tours or whatever started using Lust for Life. <laughs> and it's just like uh, Iggy Pop. And it's just like, okay, I know that you keep using the loop, the refrain for Lust for Life, but if you actually listen to the lyrics of the rest of the song, <laughs> maybe your your clientele might be a little kind of put off. www.s6k.com forward slash impact to join our revolution. www.s6k.com forward slash impact to join our revolution. www.s6k.com forward slash impact to join our revolution.